I wanted to start by asking you about the, the letter that was in the news a lot this week by the Center for AI Safety that said, paraphrasing, that mitigating the risk of extinction posed by AI technology should be treated as a global priority, the same as societal level risks like pandemics or nuclear war. And as the leader of a company that supported governments and private institutions through the pandemic, has been outspoken about the risks posed by the invasion of Ukraine on nuclear activity, how do you respond to that statement? Well, I think it's great to be here. Thank you for the light softball question. <laughs> Well, um, so we've been involved in building um, uh, uh, systems in the classified environment and in, in the last five, six years, um, uh, systems that are involved in identifying targets using AI. AI in this context meant finding um, uh, targets in very large spaces. So spaces the size of Texas, find this kind of person, and then a handoff. Uh, so. Um, you find, find target. People assume that when you find a target that you would then automatically would just disappear. Um, but in fact, what really happens is it's very hard to find these. You need to be able to work on, on uh, disparate kinds of data sets that are very large. And then there's a handoff mechanism where it's like, is the target, uh, is, the, is the identified object next to a hospital? Is it an identified object next to children? Is the identified object actually an asset of ours? is the identified object, the idiot we want to not die. That there's sort of very, a lot of complicated things that involve um, that. But, and where, what I think is yes, these technologies are very dangerous, um, but our adversaries are, are even more dangerous. And that we, because of that, have no choice but to run headlong. The, what's interesting about a lot of these statements and what's going on in AI, which is mostly focused around the large language models, is that you really have different factions. You have a faction that is saying that it's hyper dangerous because right now you need very, very specialized technology, which I believe we provide, to make large language models really, really important in your enterprise so that you're not delivering a piece of poetry to your enterprise. It's like, no one has time to deliver poetry. We need margins to change, safety to be better, uh, generally understanding of our business, the knowledge of one part of our business to be transferred to another. Uh, these are things that large language models do exceedingly well with uh, infrastructure that we'll be showing off today. And I don't want to take away from the things that are coming, but there's a lot of things we built that will allow you to do that that are very valuable. Um, there, so there's one part of that faction that is saying that because they're right and these things are very dangerous, um, but they're often right, but it's like not also mentioning if we don't build it, our adversaries will and that won't be very good for us when we have no rule of law. And I'm in a constant battle with my academic friends about this because they believe that in the absence of hard power, either using, being able to use AI now or nuclear warheads we would have a re rule of law. We at Palantir believe that you need these weapons to enforce a rule of law. And that, that's our deeply held belief, and we've had that for 20 years, and it's cost us a lot. It cost us investors, because we wouldn't work in China or in, in Russia. It cost us, sometimes people didn't want to work at Palantir. Um, but then you also have a coalition, and this is actually what I'm, it's not related to people here, but you know, in the, in, in the defense establishment where we play a role, Quite frankly, there are very few providers of software that's useful, and everyone else wants to have a debate about how dangerous they are. <laughs> Let's just debate it and debate it and debate it, and we can implement these things in five years. That we have to avoid. One of the things I, I do really like about it, though, is that for commercial enterprises, it gives you the ability, if you're adaptive, to outmaneuver everyone else. And the industries that are going to do that most effectively are largely going to be in America because American industry and its executives are just very, very pragmatic. If I can change the margins of my business, I can understand my business better, I can implement the cultural and knowledge advantages I have because I've developed a way of building my business over the last 20 years better than anyone else in the world, uh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. And 
that's just an enormous advantage. Software that allows you to identify adversaries at a high level, and we constantly caution not to say much except for that the Ukrainians use our software, changed the course of history demonstrably. And software that you know we built 20 years ago changed the course of Europe because we stopped terror attacks while protecting civil liberties. Software that we're now rolling out will change uh, the trajectory of the U.S. economy in a very positive direction. There are certainly flaws in the West, but we are the best group of countries and structures that this world has ever known. And we have now technologies that will allow us to lurch forward. And we have a cultural, we have cultural and training biases in this country that are tech friendly, pragmatic, able to implement things. Very high level of technical competence inside organizations built up over the last five, 10 years. Super willingness to bring the best talent in the world. One of the things about large language models that is just really cool is that for our partners is, it's like many of these things, it's horrifically unfair, but it's going to make places that are already strong, pragmatic, uh, have specific ways of doing business that are quite valuable. It's gonna allow those industries to lurch forward very, very, very quickly. We built products for Intel, products for Special Forces, identifying uh, adversaries, and none of them have the ability to transform a whole economy like this, and ethically, legally, safely. But the interesting thing also is that, you know, we've, and this is more academic, but we've been in the trenches. It's like one of these things, no one ever believed we cared about civil liberties, but we made a ton of money caring about civil liberties because you have to, you have certain architectural from a technical perspective, civil liberties means you need access control so that you can verify who sees what. You need an ability to do that dynamically. You need an ability to impose what objects and a mean to each other. You need ability to write against that where you only write against the segment part of your data. But now in the LLM context, you can think of that as just a way to process something that is moderately useful to very useful into something that is crazy valuable. All that processing, all those things about like academic data protection, they're really just like taking an unrefined product, moving it into a refined product and making it deadly. And to see that something that looked philosophical became valuable in the anti-terror context is now deadly in the AI context and can help people transform their businesses very, very quickly within the context of how a business actually runs. You have proprietary knowledge, you have data sets, you have things that are actually regulated, you have things that you do not want to share, you have some things that you would expose to a large language model and other things you wouldn't. You have areas where the large language model needs tooling, you, need, you have areas where it doesn't need tooling. You, you have areas where you can accept 80% accuracy and areas where you can't. You have specialized knowledge in your business that even you find it hard to articulate. Like, why is America and Silicon Valley and just in general, this culture so good at building enterprise software? I don't know how to articulate that. It's very, very hard to explain our selection and building products. How do you manufacture something very complicated that one company manufactures very well, but another company doesn't?